Today, we're gonna to be doing the Long Beach Grand Prix, but with a twist. I've decided to take my Ferrari 458 wheel out of storage and load up some project cars too on the Xbox One. But the difference inside this versus any other sim racing day is that this thing right here, the pedals, we don't need that. We are inside beautiful Long Beach, California to do the Long Beach Grand Prix. We're in the 15 Graham Ray Hall car. We're gonna seize back the podium that we didn't get inside the last Long Beach Grand Prix, 2019 one. And we're gonna do it without the pedals. We're only gonna be using the hand controls, something that you don't see normally. The only times you really see it is with drivers who have had injuries throughout the course of their career like Alex Zanardi more recently inside the uh, the 2019 Rolex 24 we have Billy Monger using similar things and we've had Robert Wickens use it in Toronto on an Acura NSX so hand controls they're not they're not new things they've been around for quite some time but we're gonna be trying to see how effective that they actually are and already it's going to be more difficult than the actual hot controls because in this scenario we're doing it with paddle shifters right you can hear the clicks each one of those clicks is either me going on the throttle or going on the brakes and the difficult part about that is that it's not a variable like you get inside a pedal. When you're pressing down on a pedal, you can go inside different levels of pressure. You know, you could press it really hard, you could press it soft. When you're pressing the brakes, you can kind of modulate the brake pressure coming into the corner. But in this case, we have none of that, absolutely none of that. It's either an on or off switch. Full throttle, no throttle, full brake, no brake, and so on. So we're gonna have to, uh, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult here. I mean, the easy part is that we're not physically moving around in an indie car that has no power steering. We don't have any uh, shifting to do because we're all automatic as, a, as expected because the paddle shifts are currently occupied. And uh, we are doing very poorly so far. We're currently dropping off the rear end of the field, trying to get some comfort back in. And over the course of this video, especially inside the IndyCar part, you're gonna see a lot of tire being stunned, stood still. There's gonna be a lot of tire that's just full on locked, sliding across the racetrack. And you're gonna see the tire meter consistently go down and down throughout the course of this very short five minute race. You see into the braking zone you kind of have to lock up the tires or let off and brake super super early if you don't want to lock them up so you lock them up right there and that's really an issue if you're trying to turn through your corner because when you lock them up you don't get the same grip so i kind of have to lock them up to slow the car down let them off but then turn it's kind of a different type of finesse you can't really turn and brake because the car is just full on locks. It's very difficult with the Indy car. Indy car doesn't do doesn't do too well just locking up the front tires, doing its own thing. I've tried this with a couple other cars, and uh, it's it it's different variations of difficulty. It also depends on the track. Long Beach is a street circuit. It has a very tight braking zones like that one right there if we go to like uh, oval for instance there's basically no difference it, it may be even easier to do it on the oval well, it might not depending on which car you use if you're in an indie car or an open wheel car pretty much full throttle anyway but to on a street circuit like this it's going to be it's going to be challenging as it is on any racing circuit to be fair I like to point out that um, 
if you're confused at why is his wheel like that that's because uh, I cut off the top of it in order to make it feel more open wheel like I was I was getting basically my DIY Formula One wheel I mean it works great because for videos like this I could just put my camera right where the wheel is and that way uh, you can see both me and my wheel motions inside a really nice angle. It's the angle that they use on Formula One. Ooh, we got a little bit of opposite. Opposite stare there. I use this angle inside Formula One sometimes on the drivers, and you can see them kind of like staring straight down, directly down the racetrack. We have one more lap to go. It's going to be a five lap race. The leaders barely got to the line in time, so we can uh, so we can start this final one. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really liking this angle, especially for this video, because you wanna, you wanna see me see like how exactly I use the wheel, how I go about kind of staring around the track. Lock them up, turn left. You can hammer just constantly just clock in the throttle. That's basically the way I modulate it because there's no pressure on it. So I have to modulate it by just constantly clocking it on and off in order to in order to kind of get around the track smoothly. And I think we haven't lost too much pace. But I think I think right now we're still we we we've done all right. We only lost about ten seconds to the tenth place car in our first in our first try of the day. So that was just that was just getting started. We're gonna be trying this with three different cars. We're gonna be trying it with the Indy car with an open wheel car, with a prototype, some type of LMP2 car, and with a Grand Touring car. We're going to use the Porsche 911. So now we have evolved into stage 2 of 3 of this video. Where we're going to be inside a LMP2 car at Spa Francochamps. Very high speed circuit. It's a long one. Most likely we're going to do at most 3 laps. It's not too challenging compared to Long Beach. A street circuit of course. And after this corner right here. We're gonna have a big long straightaway for quite some time. I'm well, not really a straightaway, but just a point of racetrack where you can basically go full throttle if you do it right. Oh my goodness, we hit the wall. Nope. We hit the glitch wall. If you didn't know by now, if you barely touch the wall on the inside, on the way up to Arouge, you basically could glitch the car and throw it up into the air. You could do it with literally anything, with a go-kart, which goes like 50 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a go-kart, to be honest with you. And I think I think the game is still broken. I think the game is still broken. Yep, look at this. Yep, mm-hmm. We, we, we found a way to broke it. We found a way to break it. All right, let's get Let's get ourselves going here. Down the front straight to turn number one. And then it's going to be flat out all the way to, I believe the corner is called Les Combs. Let's try and make a move here. Boying off the uh, the front end of this, of this car ahead of us. Let me sound down to the top end. At the corner and now we're on for the straightaway focus now because we're actually competitive for once one overtake done ninth position on the brakes ooh, 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 ooh. saved it saved it all locked up crossed up we maintain our position How many deeper can we go? Back on the throttle. 
We're doing this. We're doing this pretty well now. And now to one of my favorite parts of the course. We're gonna just ignore track limits here if we go a little bit wide. And just get a nice good run. Oh, we're coming. Wait, wait, hey, leave the space. All the time we leave the space. We're making we're making plays here. We're making major plays here. All the way up, I believe, into eighth position. Yep. I didn't want to take my eyes off the road. And now the long the long long full throttle left handers. I hit the kink soon. I think we might slide a little bit wide. Wait, no, this is an LMP2 car. We're good. There we go. Nice and easy. There's a there's an attack on our outside. It's coming to the braking zone. It's hard enough getting the braking zone there with pedals or with a controller, let alone with uh hand control, which is an on and off switch. All the way down right right on it and fully back on throttle we're gonna take our rouge flat it's not too difficult all the way in the grass we cut the corner there a little bit just just uh don't tell me we just did that and already we're getting passed by the the 60 again See how deep we can go inside the corner here. And can we try and overtake him on the outside? Oh no, he stops mid-corner. Like, I was ready to like be right back on his tail, but he stopped mid-corner. And that that puts us back into 10th position. We're up to 8th. We're doing, we're doing really good. And now, all that is gone because he just break checked us, basically, mid-corner. See if we can make another move to get back to where we were ahead of time. We're going to have to push you wide a little bit here. Sorry about that. Here we go. Nice and steady. I think I think I'm going in a little bit too hard, moving the steering wheel a little too much. Out there. One thing for sure is I'm keeping my tires warm by doing all this motion, and we should be able to have one more lap if everything goes as planned, which is I, I believe one more lap than the last time I tried this. Part. This is the hardest part right here. We, we can't. Ooh, I knew getting back on the throttle would be difficult. Getting back on the throttle there is so crucial. And I believe there's a car directly to our right side. Yes, there is. Maybe I'll break him. Oh, he hit us. Get back on the throttle. I did not turn in. I did not turn in good there at all. We're, we're, we're not lifting, we're not lifting. Oh my goodness. How do we how do we do that? How do we do that? And the thing about it is I didn't even cut the course. Last lap I had nobody next to me and I cut the course and we didn't do that there. And yeah, that straight line speed's coming. We had the advantage in the corners. I'm trying to get the hang of this. to the right on the throttle there we go the brakes brakes turn right turn right hey at least at least if we don't get our eighth position back we had some good fights some good battles and a ninth place finish we finally finish in the points if you consider the uh, the f1 point system I believe WEC uses the same points format. I, I'm not completely sure. It's kind of weird how they do it there in WEC. This is like 
points, then points 0.5, and then certain classes don't have more than 10 cars, LP1, and whatnot. But based on just the normal, like 10 car, top 10 car finishes, get points format, we're doing, we're doing fine. We're gonna get eaten up on this break, so I'm gonna try and defend. Great job at defending there. He's gonna get that run back coming down to the, to the chicane. We just need to get through the chicane nice and clean. And get on the exit. The exit is very crucial. Aw, oh, dude. It was, a little, it was a little bit sketchy there. Trying to get out the corner properly. But we did it. Ninth place. Ninth place. Great job, the first time scoring points. Dude, since we spun the car, might as well do some donuts. So here we are at Daytona, finally at the proper layout and preparation for the Rolex 24. We're inside the Porsche 911 RSR and a few of GTE cars. It's gonna be real tough getting inside of turn one here, which is pretty much, I believe, and I think it's safe to say one of the difficult, the most difficult part of the track. Second most is the bus stop. I mean, it depends how good you are at turn one. Turn one's kind of challenging because you're coming off the uh, the banking of the trial one. These corners are quite challenging as well, but not as much as the uh, the other two that I mentioned before. It's a pretty simple track for this setup. You know, not a lot of braking, a lot of straight line. As we've been it, no, we're still in it. We're still in it. We're still in it. Keep, keep my foot in it. I'm keeping my foot in it. Yep, there we go. Okay, we're still, we're still, we're still doing fine. We lost all the positions that we made up, but I feel like we're competitive enough to kind of, to kind of negate that. We're not, we're not gaining at all. Looks like the cars are well balanced. <laughs> if that's the case. We're, that doesn't help us at all. We're trying to upset our ninth place finish of last race. We wanna, we wanna improve this time around. Up. Oh, just, I'm just staying in it. I'm just staying in it. Yep. He got back past it. He got back. I can't speak. He got back by anyway. These long bankings really lend themselves to the easiness of this challenge. And it makes it a little bit a little bit more easier than I'd say any other racetrack in America. I mean this is probably this is easier than Le Mans, definitely. Even though Le Mans has like a lot of long straights. The thing about it is, uh, we should run the BMW here because of Alex and Nardi, but it'd be in the wrong BMW any which way. So we're just we're just gonna keep keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. So this is the same thing. Well, not really. You have different hand controls and an actual like decent like hand control setup. This is, I guess, in essence, the same thing as Alex and Nardi. To 2019 Rolex 24. And so right now, I don't want to call the Alex Nardi challenge because I feel like that's kind of disrespectful. But at the same time, it's the it's the hand control challenge rather. It's the hand control challenge. Can you can you use your hands to drive around in project cars too? And you use your hands if you're using the control. You're using your two fingers for the throttle. And the brake, so it's not, it's not too difficult, but it is definitely difficult, especially when it's an on and off switch. The good thing is that in the banking, you don't have to constantly kind of like nudge the uh, nudge the thumbstick, because you have to do that when you use a controller on an oval or any like long sweeping corner. So we have that comfort. We're up to ninth, which is 
the highest we've been, well, not the highest we've been, but the highest finishing position we've had this video. Let's see if we could do some more. Full locked up. I'm scared to get back from the throttle. I'm so scared. Just knowing there's going to be this like a full ram time. Just boosh. I don't have on. I don't. I don't think I have on traction control. I think I have on stability. No, I think I have on traction control. I think stability control and ABS are off. So I mean, that's a good thing. Maybe we need to try this again without the traction control. And we try it without the anti-lock brakes. And so it's not, it's not in completely impossible, at least on the braking front. We're, it's going to be hard though. If we do that, you'll have to kind of turn off the corner and kind of point the car straight when you're applying the throttle, which you kind of already do if you have traction control off, but a little bit more literal this time around. We're in eighth place trying to defend our position from the Corvette. And we do a great job backing it down inside the bus stop. This is going to be the final lap. We're going to be up one position from the last race, unless one of these cars catastrophically fails to make its way to the line. And I think that has been a very successful one. I think if I didn't mess up at the beginning, and this race was a little longer, we might have actually been decently competitive, which is really good considering the, the disadvantages that we have. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to follow me on Instagram. It's at DKMGram. Tag me in stuff that you do like this, any racing related stuff, I'll give it a like. Be sure to be a good person <laughs> that's gonna be my outro from now on it's just gonna be be sure to be a good person